So even if you've done a lot of electronics, you might not have seen this circuit before or not have played with the circuit before. Um, I was somewhat sort of familiar with it, but it's always fascinated with me and I've never really gotten to play with it. So I figure, well, now's, now I'm retired, I can, I can play with things. Um, it goes by a bunch of different names. We'll see some different things here. Negative impedance converter, gyrator, and generalized impedance converter, and some other names as well. So um, I'm just going to be calling them gyrators, okay? So this is in the uh, art of electronics, Horowitz and Hill, and we're going to be talking about gyrators. Um, and it basically uh, inverts impedance. Um, or other things as well. But you can turn capacitors into inductors and you can turn inductors into capacitors. I know it sounds really weird, but that is true. If you've always wondered why you learn all about inductors and then when you look at circuits, you don't see many of them. You might see them in power supplies, but really don't see them in filters and stuff these days. And that's because electronically we can create fake inductors and we just use those instead and we use we use these circuits okay the circuit that really had me interested for a long time is this one uh it looks really weird there's two op amps and they tie into each other in weird ways and then they feed back and it's all incest incestuous um and so yeah this can turn it into an inductor though uh, the inductor is uh, the four resistors plus one capacitor. So you replace Z4 with a capacitor and you can turn turn this into an inductor. Now, there's a kind of a caveat. It's an inductor reference to ground. It's hard to use these circuits with floating inductors like in series, but inductors that are referenced to ground, then these circuits work. All right. So you can do all sorts of things with these with these. Now, I, I don't really believe that they're used all that much these days. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I know there's a lot of really high-end um, audio equipment that still says those are the best filters because of their phase um, being much more linear. But uh, uh, Solin and Key are sort of the filters I've always used as active filters, right? And so those are the ones I'm more familiar with, and I sort of bypassed that other that other thing. So let's look at a different book. Uh, this is a book, uh, Electronic Filter Design Handbook uh, by who? Oh, here we go. Uh, Williams and Taylor. Okay, so great book. I've had it since the mid 80s when it was brand new <laughs> and uh, used it actually for a project. project. But anyway, uh, it has the uh, generalized impedance converter, the same thing here with the same same equations. Um, you can also uh, put in two two capacitors and then change it into this weird, if you ever see a symbol that has four straight lines, it's a, a D element or a generalized a gyrator element is, is this weird thing. Um, so this is there's a story about these elements. Somebody invented a, f a fictitious element. You had resistors and inductors and other things. And he invented a fictitious um, thing that he called, I th think he called it the gyrator at the time. Anyway, it's, it's insignia like this. But for those mathematically inclined or who have gone to engineering school, here are the 1 over S impedance transformation, the inductor, capacitor, and uh, the uh, weird uh, D, D uh, element here. And uh, so you can change all of these things and morph them using the right circuits. So yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at a... All right, so here's a filter that... Uh, they send you through the design process. You first, to, first of all, you design it with L's and C's. So here's, here's an L's, L and C filter that somebody designed. It's a low pass filter, and then you tran, you do a, a, a one over S transform, and you get it into this uh, situation here. We have all of these, uh, these weird gyrator things, and then you then create a normalized version of it with everything equal to one farad or one ohm. 
and then you put in the extra bits that you need to hit the frequencies you want, and then you get a generalized form, and then you put in real values that you might actually build, and then you actually build it and you get this really sharp cutoff filter. This one is designed around 275 hertz. So it's like a brick wall boom, and then it's got some ringing in the, uh, in the reject band. Um, and yeah, so very, very interesting. Uh, very oddly, oddly uh, put together type of filter. Um, I really don't have a good gut feel for these things. Uh, you're you're basically you're basically modifying the um, the S11 or what they call the Z11 impedance of these things. Um, looking down into them, and then you put them into these formulas and transforms and blah 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 blah. So way over my head, way way past my pay grade. Um, but I think what would be fun is to put this filter into spice and see if it really does this wonderful picture here. It looks too good to be true. So yeah, let's put this in the spice. One of the weird things here is they have all these trimmer pots, probably to take out the inaccuracies of all your parts, but I'm assuming that if you put in the right values, the thing should be perfect, right? In an ideal situation. So yeah, let's, let's, let's go see if we can build something like that. All right, so here we are in microcap. Um, I have uh, typed in that whole uh, drawn in, I guess, drawn in that whole uh, filter. And you can see it's uh, quite complicated, a lot going on here. Uh, there is some question about, there's some potentiometers in the um, schematic that are labeled at 500 ohms. Um, and I've tried 500 and I've tried 250, figuring maybe they're midway on a 500 pot. Anyway, I just have 500, 500 in here now. And it does make some difference, but I think there's more going on than just that pot. So uh, let's take a look at a uh, analysis of this thing. We'll do a uh, we'll do an AC analysis from uh, 10 hertz to a thousand hertz, and uh, yeah, it does what the filter's supposed to do. It has a cutoff here around 250 um, hertz and then some ringing in the uh, reject band. But it doesn't have a very sharp uh, top. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's just not really nice right now, right, right there. So if I go back and I change all of these, um, let's say the potentiometer maybe was supposed to be centered. We'll put these all back to uh, 250 and see if that does, oops, does much. All right, so we have them all back to 250. We can run our ACLN, AC analysis again. And you can see it, 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 it does do some crunchiness up here. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Um, it's a very, complicated circuit. I could do Monte Carlo analysis for each um, each resistor and then I could do a Monte Carlo analysis for all what six resistors and try to figure out which ones end up being the best thing. Yeah yeah anyway it's it seems to be quite complicated. Um, it, yeah <laughs> it might actually be easier in a real a real filter where you could actually tweak them and watch real time what's going on. But uh, anyway, I just thought it was an interesting exercise. I'm not a big spice guy, but um, this filter is doing what, what it's expected to do with this really complicated thing. Um, so anyway, um, people probably want to see the phase, don't they? Uh, since that's, a, that's the claim to fame with this thing, I can turn the phase on here. Um, uh, I thought I turned it on. Uh, phase run. Oh, there we go. Here's the phase information. So, yeah, it's doing some really discontinuities here uh, in the in the pass band. So uh, in the uh, reject band, I mean. But so maybe you don't really care about this these discontinuities or these weird things going on in here. You're mostly 
interested in this nice smooth, smooth roll off right to the cutoff. So that's probably this filter's claim to fame. It's, it's got a nice, it's got a nice uh, linear roll off here. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm not sure all what I learned, but it was fun doing it. <laughs> let's go, let's go to the next step and do some other ones.